So I want to investigate the compounding of interest in a bank account. And I'm going to look at three different cases. I'm going to look at interest compounded annually or once a year, interest compounded quarterly or four times a year, and interest compounded monthly. There's a, another case that I'm not going to cover because um, it's a little bit different, and that's when you have continuous compounding of interest. And if you're interested in that, I'll leave that for you uh, to investigate on your own. So let's look at the three cases. Okay, first, I want to look at interest compounded annually. Or let me, here, interest compounded annually. Now notice I've overrun my first box. So what I want to do is merge and center the text there into one box. So interest compounded annually. Now I'll look at interest compounded quarterly as my second case. So let me copy what's in that box, click here and paste. And then let me change that to quarterly instead of annually. Now, let me look at interest compounded monthly there. And instead of here, let me just say monthly. There are three cases. Now, let's suppose that my deposit, which I'm going to call my principal, that's AL, not LE, my deposit originally is $10,000. Hit return. Now, I want to actually explicitly indicate that this is money. So I go up here to the general box. I don't want general. I'm going to compound it as currency, and I'm set up to compound it as dollars here. Let me try this again. Currency there, $10,000. I'll do the interest rate, I-N-T-E-R-E-S, interest is, and I'll hit return, and then I'll click on the box, and I want to do uh, 0.02 for 2% 2 interest. So there's my interest rate, which is 2% per year. Now I want to ask the question, how much money is in the bank at the end of every month? So I'll type month here, hit return. Now month one, put a one there and hit return. Now I'll type month two there. So I have month one and month two. I'm going to click here and then shift click here, take the corner and drag it down and let's go out to, I'll just stop at 27. So month one, month two, three, all the way down, 27 months. I'm not actually going to do the computation all the way down that far. Okay, so first question I ask is, at the end of month one, how much money do we have in the bank? Well, there's no interest that's added to the, our bank account on month one. So the amount in there is just the same, I put equal, as our original principal deposit. So it's equal to B2. Now, the interest does not accumulate through the first 11 months. So now, what's happened here? This isn't what I want. So it's taken 10,000, because I had 10,000 here, and then it's automatically filling in what is below 0.02, and then but what is below that, which is zero. So oh, just, drag, just doing that doesn't give me what I want. So let me delete it. Let me come back up here. Now I'm going to put equal, and it's going to equal 10,000 there. Hit return. And then here, I'll do the same thing. I'll put equal, and I'll click on this, and then hit return. Now let me take this amount 
and drag it down to month 11, and it fills in properly every box with $10,000. Now something's gonna change in the 12th month because that's the end of the first year. Interest gets added to my bank account in the 12th, at the end of the 12th month. Now I'm gonna put equal, and I have whatever was in my bank account here on the previous month, which is that amount, and I'm going to add to it the interest, which is 2%, so it's 0.02, I could type 0.02, or click on this, 0.02, oh, look at that, I don't want that as currency. So let me just fix that here. Uh, let me undo what I've typed there, 0.15. Now, that's not, so, I don't want this to be currency, I just want it to be a number. So let me fix that to general, so there. So now the 12th month, I can go back up here, I can say, okay, I'm gonna take what's in the previous month, which is B15, this number, and I'm going to add to that uh, the interest rate, which is 0.02, times uh, this amount right here, which is B15 again, and hit return, so at the end of the 12th month, I now have my original principal plus the 2% interest, which is compounded once a year. So I have $10,200. Now this stays the same all the way down to the 23rd month. And that isn't what I wanted to do. Again, uh, let me just fix that, okay? and I can fix that because what I want here, I'll put equal, and I'll put what was in the previous month there. Now, let me take this, if I drag this down, it will fill in the appropriate amount. So I have $10,200 all the way to the end of month 23. At the end of month 24, which is the end of the second year, I add 2% of whatever I have in the bank. So I type here, I put equal, I click what the amount is at the end of the previous month, and then I add to that 2%, another 2%, but it's not a 2% of 10,000, it's the 2% of 10,200. So it's 2% this times this, hit return, and I now have, at the end of two years, $10,404. Okay, so that's how interest is accumulated if it is compounded annually. What happens if it's compounded quarterly? Well, I still have my principal of $10,000. So let me go over here, and I'll just put equal, and I'll click on this, hit return there. My interest rate is still 2%. So I'll put equal, and I'll put this, and hit return, so 2% there. Now, uh, I want to accumulate my interest once every three months, as opposed to once every four months. So, we're at the end of month one right here. I still have 10,000, so I'll put equal, and I'll click on this number, 10,000, there, boom. At the end of month two, I still have 10, what's 10,000, what, what I had at the previous month, so I'll click on this, equals, hit return. At the end of month three is the first time I add interest. So I have what was in the bank at the end of the previous month, equals 10,000, and now I add my interest. So I'm gonna put plus, and it's going to be 2%, but not a full 2% because I haven't finished a full year. I've only finished a quarter of a year. So it's that 2% divided by four. Now let me put this whole thing in parentheses here. So parentheses, parentheses. So I have 2% divided by four, and then that gets multiplied by 10,000. And now I hit return. So at the end of month three, uh, the interest gets added, I now have $10,050.
So what happens then at month four? I have what was in at the end of month three because no interest is added. So I'll put that. The end of month five, no interest is added. So I'll put that. And at the end of month six, I now add another 2% to what was in at the end of the previous month here. So I'm going to take equals. I'm going to click on this, E9. I'm going to add another 2% divided by 4. So it's this divided by 4. Let me put that in parentheses again because I want to make sure the calculation is done properly. And then I'm going to multiply that by this amount. Now I hit return. So I now have $10,100.25. Now what goes in here is what was in the previous month. What goes in here is what was in the previous month. Now, at the end of month nine is the end of another quarter. So I add another 2% divided by 4 amount of interest. So let's do that. I put equals this amount plus my added interest, which is 2% divided by 4 times what was in at the end of the previous month. I have that. So I now have 150.75 rather than 100 added to my 10,000. Okay, month 10, I put equal, click on that. Month 11, I put equal, click on that. Now, at the end of month 12, here's month 12, I now add another 2%. So I put equal, I click on this, and I add 2% of that amount. So I do, I, or 2% divided by 4, so I do parentheses, 0.02 divided by 4, close parentheses, times, click on that, hit return. So I now have $10,201.51. So compounding quarterly at the end of a year gives me this amount, 10,201.51. Compounding it only annually gives me this amount. So you see, I earn a little bit more interest here by the end of the first year. And now, this amount now continues down, equals, click on this, hit return, and I continue this process in the same way. So that what what happens if I compound it quarterly. Now, what happens if I compound the interest monthly? Okay, I still have my original deposit, $10,000, so it's equal to that. I'm still taking the same interest rate, so I have that. Okay, now I'm going to, every month now, I'm going to add a little bit of interest to my bank account. Now, when it was compounded quarterly, four times a year, I took 2% and divided it by four and added that amount of interest every quarter. A month is one twelfth of a year. So every month I'm going to take 2% divided by 12 and take that amount of interest and add it to my account. So this is the way it works. I put equals. At the end of the first month, I have $10,000 plus now I take 2% divided by 12. I'm putting this in parentheses again times my 10,000 and hit return. So at the end of my first month, I have $10,016.67. The end of the second month, I put equals. Now I put, click on this amount. I add to it my interest, which is 0.02 divided by 12 times this amount, 
the previous month's amount. Hit return. So I now have $10,033.36. So here I'm accumulating interest every month, a small amount. Now here I can just drag on the box and it should carry that calculation down correctly. Now, okay, something's going wrong here. So what, what is going wrong? Let's look at this. So here the amount is I5 plus now I3. So this is wrong, actually. Uh, yeah, no, it's not. I'm sorry. It's 2%. I, so this is what I have there. Now what I have here is I6. Now it's, here's the mistake. It should be taking I3 and it's putting in I4 instead of I3 because I dragged this down and it jumped down. Notice this is unchanged. Why? Because what's in I4, I4 is zero. It's nothing. And I want that to be I3, not I4. Okay, so now I can show you something about Excel that I haven't yet shown you. Let me just delete all of this. Okay, so this is now uh, the correct amount. It's I3, which is this. This is I3, which is that. And what happened when I would drag this down, it then went from I3 here to I4, which is there, which is why it gave me the wrong answer. I can keep that box from incrementing by putting a dollar sign in front of this. So I'll put a dollar sign in front of the three. That's a little thing in Excel. It will prevent that from incrementing when I drag it down. So I still want I5 plus I3 divided by 12 times 15. It's going to prevent the three from incrementing to four when I drag it. Let's see what happens. I drag it and it stays I5, I3. So it stays I3. Now, I could have also, just to be safe, put the dollar sign in front of the five here. Let's just do that. Let's put a dollar sign in front of the five because <coughs> I couldn't have been sure that that, <coughs> excuse me, that that wouldn't also increment on me. So let me do that and hit return. Now I'll drag this down. No. I want that <coughs> I wanted that in to increment. <coughs> oh, please excuse me. I can't cough and think at the same time. Let me shift click here and delete those two boxes and start that again. Okay, so what I want to put here is interest added to this amount. So I'm going to put equal this amount, which is that, plus, and I'm going to do the 0.02 divided by 12, which is 0.02, divided by 12. I want to put that in parentheses. I put that in parentheses. And I'm going to multiply that by the amount in the previous month times this. Now, here is where I want to change, I want to put a dollar sign in front of the three. Because as I drag this down, I'm going to want the I5 to change to I6, because the calculation is always done on the amount of money in the previous month. But the I3, I want to stay the same at 2%. I don't want that to increment to I4. And to prevent the three from changing to a four, I put a dollar sign in front of the three like that. Now I hit return. Now, so this is I5 plus the 2% in I3 divided by 12 times I5. 
Now if I drag this down, it does the calculation here and where it takes what's in the previous month, which is I6, still using I3, divided by 12 times I6. Now this, I can drag down and it should give me the proper formula in every box. Now notice here, I compound it monthly. And uh, so 1633 um, of 50 and so on. So it's accumulating uh, money at a slightly faster rate. So I have I6. So I'm always adding my interest to the amount in the previous month. So for example, the last month 13 year, um, let me just, I don't want to go down to month 13. So notice here, at month 12, I have accumulated $10,201.84, which is slightly larger than what I accumulated when I was compounding it quarterly. Um, however, on these intermediate months, uh, the interest is compounded every month. Over here, it's not compounded every month. So let's just investigate. Look at the end of the first quarter, I have $50.08 interest accumulated, so I have eight cents more interest. And then at the end of, um, so this is uh, adding up slightly faster when the interest is compounded monthly. Now the next level that you might want to think about is what's called compounding continuously. And I won't do that because that involves a slightly different formula. Uh, in fact, you, the formula is derived by taking limits of expressions and so on. But if you compound continuously, that is sort of every little tiny smallest increment of time, we're accumulating also a tiny little small increment of interest. And that is the fastest way to accumulate interest into a bank account.